hello everyone after the detailed discussion about the three oxygen binding proteins hemoglobin hemerythrin and hemocyanin we'll just try to compare the differences and similarities of these oxygen binding proteins the important feature of all these oxygen binding proteins is the reversibility reversibility it simply refers that oxygen can bind and unbind depending on the various conditions such as partial pressure of dioxygen or the temperature or the pH existing at the physiological conditions. For our comparison, I have uh, considered different parameters and will try to compare hemoglobin and also its monomer myoglobin along with hemerythrin and hemocyanin. First one being the heme protein. In hemoglobin as well as myoglobin iron is surrounded by porphyrin hence we call it as a heme protein whereas in the case of hemerythrin and hemocyanin the metals bimetallic centers they are not surrounded by porphyrin therefore these are not heme proteins where are they found hemoglobin and myoglobin are found in vertebrates and a very few invertebrates hemerythrin is found in marine invertebrates and hemocyanin it is exclusively or we say erratically found in mollusca and arthropoda only two phyla number of subunits hemoglobin has four subunits myoglobin only has a single subunit or you can simply call it as a one unit hemerythrin has many subunits ranging from a monomer dimer trimer tetramer and octamer in hemocyanin the number of subunits range from the multiples of six 6, 12, 18, 24, 48 and so on and also we have discussed that the later investigations have uh, shown the number of subunits not to be in the multiples of 6 but to 10, 20 and so on. Cooperativity can be seen in hemoglobin when it comes to myoglobin since it is only a single unit the process of cooperativity is not expected. In hemerythrin and hemocyanin, cooperativity is present to a greater extent. Hill's constant, it is about 2.8, indicating positive cooperativity is present. Myoglobin, cooperativity is absent and hence the Hill constant is found to be 1. Hemerythrin and hemocyanin also have cooperativity, but comparatively, the cooperativity of hemerythrin is lesser than the hemoglobin. This is for human beings. Whereas in the case of hemocyanin, the cooperativity is found to be very high. So 3 to 5 is a very high figure and we can very easily understand why it is ranging from 3 to 5. If at all we take a small example of a giant octopus, which is uh, uh, which can easily fill a 8 by 8 room, such a big octopus and if at all it requires the oxygen, blood has to flow to its uh, tentacles. So the process of cooperativity should be very high so that the blood can supply the required amount of oxygen and therefore we can also see a very high amount of cooperativity. Number of metals per subunit in hemoglobin as well as in myoglobin we find only one iron per subunit whereas hemerythrin and hemocyanins are bimetallic centers where we find two irons and two coppers. When it comes to the buffering capacity what is this buffering capacity? Suppose the metal atom or the metal ion that is present at the active site participates in redox reactions. Redox reactions, I mean to say, uh, not uh, the regular redox reactions. Suppose if iron is present in plus 2 oxidation state for hemoglobin and myoglobin, that hemoglobin and myoglobin slowly they shift their oxidation state from plus 2 into plus 3 when they get oxygenated. But once they get deoxygenated, again plus 3 oxidation state drops back to the plus 2 oxidation state. In such a sense, I am saying it as a reducing and oxidizing. When it comes to hemerythrin, iron from plus 2 again it goes to plus 3, plus 3 to plus 2. Even for copper, there is a switching of oxidation state from 1 to 2. So once there is a switching of oxidation state, suddenly there is a loss or gain of some electron density at the metal site. There should be some buffering capacity so that there should not be any sudden loss or a sudden gain that may lead to some effects. So such an electron buffering capacity is being provided in the case of hemoglobin and myoglobin from the porphyrin nitrogens. 
we are aware that nitrogen is a borderline base it is not very hard it is neither very soft it is a borderline one and uh, it can best act as a buffer so whatever electron that is lost from the iron of the hemoglobin or myoglobin suddenly some buffering electron density comes from the nitrogen of porphyrin in the case of hemerythrin as well as hemocyanin there is no porphyrin but the buffering capacity comes from the histidine nitrogens both in the case of hemerythrin and also in hemocyanin there is also a histidine nitrogen in the case of hemoglobin and myoglobin but that content is very less in comparison to the porphyrin nitrogens which are four in number per each subunit then <coughs> coming to the geometrical aspects in geometrical aspects let us try to compare the deoxy as well as the oxy forms in deoxy forms in the case of hemoglobin and myoglobin almost they are similar so it is square pyramid in the case of deoxy form whereas octahedral in the case of oxy form square pyramid it is not a perfect square pyramid there are some distortions we also call it as a tetragonal geometry and in this case octahedra it is almost a perfect octahedra then in the case of hemerythrin there are two irons iron a and iron b for iron a approximately octahedral environment and square pyramid whereas in the case of oxy form both become octahedral geometry in the case of hemocyanin two copper centers are similar they have trigonal pyramidal geometry but the two trigonal pyramids are found to be staggered to one another once it gets oxygenated the geometry reaches square pyramid which are like anti to one another magnetic aspects hemoglobin and myoglobin are paramagnetic in the deoxy form but once they are converted into oxy form they are diamagnetic this diamagnetism is explained on the basis of anti ferromagnetic coupling between the one unpaired electron of the iron 3 low spin and one unpaired electron of the superoxo dioxygen form in the case of hemerythrin deoxy form is paramagnetic whereas oxy form is diamagnetic due to a very strong anti ferromagnetic coupling in the case of copper deoxy form copper 1 daten configuration so it is purely diamagnetic no unpaired electron in the case of oxy form there are two unpaired electrons one in each copper but due to strong anti ferromagnetic coupling it behaves as a diamagnetic one so all these are epr silent electronic aspects deoxy and oxy forms iron is present in plus 2 and plus 3 even in the myoglobin iron 2 is converted to plus 3 hemerythrin also iron 2 is converted to iron plus 3 So in the case of hemoglobin myoglobin and hemerythrin we find a spin crossover from a high spin it is converting into a low spin state all these are ligand induced so you can call it as a ligand induced spin crossovers in the case of hemocyanin there is uh, no such spin crossover because it is from d10 to d9 and so on so spin crossover is present in the three cases whereas in hemocyanin it is absent color in the case of hemoglobin and myoglobin it is purplish color because of uh, ligand to uh, it is interligand charge transfer transitions we call it as a ilct in the case of oxy form the color is red it is because of ilct and also some interference coming from the ligand so you can also add a little bit of lmct the color becomes red hemerythrin as well as hemocyanin are colorless in the deoxy forms but they are colored and purple red for hemerythrin and blue color for copper forms of dioxygen both in hemoglobin and myoglobin they exist as a superoxo form whereas in hemerythrin and hemocyanin they exist as a peroxo form <coughs> getting to the bonding modes bonding modes are endon terminal that is most commonly found endon terminal is present in hemoglobin myoglobin as well as hemerythrin but when it comes to hemocyanin the bonding mode is side on bridging hapticity neta 1 we say mono hapto mono hapto and mono hapto bonding for the given ligand dioxygen whereas in the case of hemocyanin it is a di hapto di hapto 1 since one oxygen of the peroxo form is bound to both the metal atoms and both the oxygens are simultaneously bound to both the metal atoms so we say di hapto as well as di hapto 
Stretching frequency for hemoglobin and myoglobin, it is found around 1050 wave numbers. For hemerythrin, it is 843 wave numbers. 1050 indicates that it is a superoxoform. Anywhere around 850 can indicate a peroxoform. So it is 843 peroxoform. 750 should also be a peroxoform, but it is at a, a very lesser number. So why it is very less, we can see from this. There are two metal atoms from which the electron density is flowing into the peroxoform. As more and more electron density flows, the stretching frequency also drop. Whether hydrogen bonding is present or not, yes, in the case of hemoglobin and in the case of myoglobin, hydrogen bonding is present which comes from the distal histidine. In case of hemerythrin also, there is a hydrogen bonding and the stability for that hydrogen bond is coming from the oxo bridge and the hydrogen of the peroxoform. Well, in the case of hemocyanin, we don't find any hydrogen bonding. This is the comparison of the oxygen binding proteins.